In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. On this last Sunday of Great Lent proper, we commemorate St. Mary of Egypt. And in the week preceding this Sunday, the Church sets before us, in conjunction with the great canon, this Life of St. Mary, written by St. Sophronius of Jerusalem. And this account of her life is one of the great treasures of the tradition we have received in the Church. It's set before us every year because it has such depths that we encounter in it year after year after year. And there are many ways that we can read the story. We can read it as a story about repentance, which is perhaps the most common and straightforward way to read it, which is a large part of why it's placed toward the end of Lent. We can read it as a story about asceticism, again, locating it within Lent. We can read it as a story about there always being greater heights of spiritual life, greater depths of spiritual knowledge to which we have not yet attained, which is the lesson that's, or one of the lessons offered to St. Zosimus in the story and also helps us locate it not only within Lent, but at the end of Lent, that whatever we've achieved during this Lenten season, there is far more to be achieved. We can read it as a story about the many courses that a person's life can take and still wind up in the harbor of salvation in the church, which is the reason that the angel gives to St. Zosimus for why he should go to the Jordan. A way of reading it that particularly strikes me is as a story about the way that God arranges things for our salvation. I often quote my favorite passage from the story where She's on the ship going to Jerusalem and says, in recounting this, I am amazed that the sea did not swallow us up. But I think that God was seeking my repentance. And indeed, we see these hooks that God has placed to catch her and bring her to salvation the crowd going to the ship, which she follows just out of idle interest, the crowd rushing to the church when she arrives in Jerusalem, and then, having reached the church, she's unable to enter and she has this great moment of repentance. And so, God does not force anything upon her. She could certainly, being unable to enter the church, and thinking at first that it was only because of the press of the crowd, have given up and gone away.
but she accepted what God set before her. And accepting it changed the course of her life, went out into the desert and became the great saint that we know of. But of course, God's providential action in her life doesn't end there by any means. In the desert, she longed for the blessed body and blood of Christ to receive the sacraments in the church. She longed for the encounter with the church in the person of St. Zosimus, not knowing him, of course, but to confess to a priest to receive the body and blood of Christ. And so Saint, the Lord arranged in the life of St. Zosimus for him to receive this great edification, this great spiritual lesson, and also arranged for her to receive those gifts of the church for which she longed. And of course, we can go on to look at the many other examples of divine providence in the story. But the main point to be made here is that in all our life, God is seeking our salvation. And he often seeks and works for the salvation of each of us through the other, arranging our meetings, our encounters, what comes our way in life, not to compel us to salvation, but continually to offer us the path of salvation, continually to call us to him. And so the story of St. Mary of Egypt, among the many other lessons that it offers us, reminds us to be ever mindful of what God is setting before us to lead us to salvation, what God is setting before us to bring us to him and to call us like St. Mary to repentance and transformation of life, to call us like St. Zosimus to go beyond what we have so far attained and enter more deeply upon the path of salvation. And so remembering God's providential working in all things shown to us in the lives of St. Zosimus and St. Mary. We give him glory now and ever, the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.